What is going on YouTube? Twigging Timber Outdoors here to answer some of your basic angling questions. Now, I've taken some different questions from different sources in which I've asked questions, mostly being from the viewers on YouTube. Now, this first bit is angled specifically uh, for newer anglers, and some of the things that are typically asked for new for, uh, from newer anglers uh, when starting. So, I figure we might as well just dive right into it in this little Q&A session. Okay, this is going to be part one of a series, so let's make sure we uh, stay tuned. Maybe your question will be asked. Okay, first one. What is a good and affordable fly rod and reel combo for a beginner? Now, rather than throwing specific rods and reels at you, um, remember that it depends on a couple of things. First off, what species is your target species? Um, if we're talking about uh, conventional tackle, uh, it's very difficult to beat uh, a spinning rod and reel combo, uh, especially in a lower budget. Um, just make sure that when you're looking at parts, if you want longevity in your products, you want to make sure you're looking for um, gear that is uh, of higher quality craftsmanship and typically of made of metals or alloys. Now, if you're not sure if you want to get into it, then make sure that you look into something affordable. But if you know that you already like the concept of fishing, you've tried it. Um, then go for something that you feel like uh, is the best product within your budget. Um, for fly fishing, uh, I would always recommend for a new angler a, a, a medium, I'm sorry, a, uh, a full flex or a mid flex rod. And something, if, you, if you're trout fishing, uh, remember that your reel probably isn't going to matter immensely early on, um, especially at bass, pan fish especially. You, your reels. You might put a fish through your reel once a year, or if you want to use it as a multi-species rod uh, and reel, um, just remember that it's much more important to know how to ang how to fish for said species rather than the gear itself. You can usually find some good gear early on uh, in an affordable price. Um, just check out some of my other videos for that. But I would always recommend for fly fishing a mid flex or a full flex rod because you can feel the rod load a little better. Um, let's see. <clears throat> How do you determine good gear versus junk gear other than price? Um, it's a myth in some cases that uh, certain manufacturers will utilize better materials and sources. Uh, especially for blanks than others. Um, when it comes to fishing, there are many companies that will put out similar products from similar lines of blanks. And when it comes to a blank, the blank is the actual rod itself without the um, the, the guides and things on it or the reel seat. Um, my first thing is I always look for whether or not the product has a warranty. If it has a warranty, how long is that warranty? Do they stand behind their products? Uh, m most of the time, what you're going to find when you when you buy more expensive things, you probably will get better craftsmanship, uh, better accessorization, if you will. But at the same time, um, you usually get a lifetime warranty, and that does speak volumes towards certain companies. Uh, I know that whenever you have a you know a lifetime warranty, they will take a nominal ch you know charge to ship, to fix, or to replace, and send you a new product. And if they can't, they will send you a new, better product that you probably than what you had before. So I always look for a warranty. Um, and also, yes, for certain, especially in conventional angling, you do get increased sensitivity as well as uh, versatility when it comes to your rod and reels. All right, let's see. How do you pick the right fly in different streams? That's going to be dependent on what's prevalent in that stream and what species you're fishing for. If you're fishing for trout, which I'm assuming because you didn't say anything, and uh, you know you want to attack that said stream, uh, you need to you need to know what uh, you are fishing for. First of all, so if it's brown trout, they are typically more piscivorous, meaning they are more willing to take larger uh, fish style flies. They eat fish for a large percentage of their diet, um, but at the same time. If you just want to catch fish, you know you, you might want to downsize. But I like to incorporate. I have a video on this specifically, um, the three S's, and I believe this was a Leland method early on. But it's um, size, shape, and uh, shade. So size of the fly match it to the hatch. Uh, shape of the fly does it have wings up like a mayfly? Are they laying back like a caddis? Is it a stonefly shape with front-facing antennae? 
Uh, and then lastly, shade, you know, is it a dark hatch, is it a lighter hatch like a Cahill? Uh, just you need to make sure that you're kind of matching that hatch, okay? What is prevalent as a food source? And if you're fishing for bass, you know streamers. Uh, if it's a dark, if the muddy's, uh, if the water's muddy and murky, uh, either use like a chartreuse or a dark fly, like a black or a purple fly. Um, are you do you need to get down to the bottom? Is the water cold? Did you take that water temperature? Um, or are you fishing top water? You know, with poppers or with mice. So. It depends, but make sure that you know what the fish are eating, and then try to best match that. Um, how can how can you take good underwater fly fishing videos, or how to tie? So we're gonna say I would say I've been using um, a ra rather inexpensive 4K 60fps camera. Um, it's a GoPro clone. Uh, GoPros are great, um, but I don't have the kind of money, so I've been using that, and it's been doing wonderful for me. Um, been doing wonderfully, so I. I would recommend you know something with a with a housing, a water housing, but uh, you know if you're not if you're just new to this, don't go out and spend a ton of money early on unless you have the capital to do so.